good afternoon. Um, welcome to my daily chat. And today we're going to talk about self-care and self-support and why you should stop waiting for someone else to do it for you. Because I know you might have that wish in the back of your mind. I'll explain how I know that and I'll also explain what you can do about it in a moment. Uh, before I jump into that, let me, let, let me introduce myself. I should say I'm going to take time to introduce myself because you can't interrupt me. I'm doing it myself. <laughs> I'll introduce myself and then I'll get into the topic at hand. Um, hi, my name is Barry Selby. Welcome to my broadcast. I am an inspirational speaker, um, best-selling author of the book 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women, and also a love and relationships expert helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which is why I do these talks every day, um, actually it's why I help women, and also why I do these talks every day, which started almost three years ago, called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. So today we're at episode number 844, I think, I, yeah, 844. And the topic today is all about self-support and self-care. Now, if you don't care about taking care of yourself, no need to watch, but I think you might want to stay tuned. Because if you're like a lot of people I know, you have this romantic yearning that somebody out there is going to be making you happy. Hi, Danielle, let's see my broadcast. Um, and by the way, this is Facebook Live first, in case you're watching on YouTube and wondering who am I talking to. <laughs> So the thing we'll talk about is part, there's two parts to this. One part is that we are perpetually, continually, and wishfully thinking that someone's going to come along and save us. And this is particularly true for women who think that, who believe that they're still being the damsels in distress and some knight in shiny armor is going to come forward and save them from whatever life they're not having. As much as women go, we're independent, we're fierce, we're going to take care of ourselves, we're running, everything's great there's still a part of their mind that's still trapped in that um, Cinderella story or that Snow White story or whatever which Disney princess fantasy fiction there is out there that makes you think that somehow that's going to change in your life and the reality is it's not going to happen that way and we should say it won't be healthy if it happens that way but there's more to it than that so part of what I would speak to is there's a distinct um, not wish so much but a distinct paradigm that we believe that somebody else is going to come along and make our life okay that they're going to support us they're going to make us feel okay and that we're going to feel like life is going beautifully now if someone does that that's wonderful however if you are in the position thought mindset that they're going to be the one that's going to make you feel better two things are happening one of which is you may be waiting for a long time and not taking care of yourself, which is a mistaken approach. Secondly, if you do finally meet that person, that person shows up in your life and becomes the person that makes you feel better, makes you feel whole, makes you feel happy, makes you feel everything else, you're gonna be finding yourself attached to what they do or don't do perpetually. And what's gonna be happening is you're gonna feel absolutely, hi Amanda, thanks for being here, good evening. You're gonna feel that you're life wrote, um, revolves around them. If it's starting to sound painful, good. Because what I'm saying here is you're going to be trapped in a paradigm of codependency, which I talk about a lot. Exactly, Amanda, you're already ahead of me. The route, of can, ro the route, the route <laughs> depending on your country of origin, of codependency. And what I talk about codependency, it's like being puppet on a string. Because your partner is going to be the person you give the power to, to control your feelings. And that sounds blatant because it is. It may act more subtly over time, but it's more blatant. Which is why I'm talking about the fact that it's not somebody else's job to root. Yeah, right. Okay, you want to be, you want to be pedantic about it, Amanda. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> yeah, because route from where I'm from is actually what you use to get people out of something. It's like when there's a route at a, an, on a battlefield, they get, you know, or a losing team. Anyway, that's a whole different topic. Getting back to this one, <laughs> in the title I mentioned that if you're waiting for someone else to make you feel happy, to make you feel taken care of and make you feel all these different things, that is the path, exactly the route to codependency as a matter so well put, he's framed it. I've been somewhat adamant for a while now about self-love and self-support. I don't do it for a waste, I'm not just doing it to waste my breath. What I'm talking about here, bigger than that, is that the way you live your life, the way you succeed in life, the way that you are healthy in life, is when you learn how you can take care of yourself first. 
In fact, it's like two posts today. I was commenting on friends' posts about their own journey into, into taking care of themselves, and I said, and I said it both times because this is the thing I've talked about for a while now, and it was one of the things I learned in my, my first seminar, actually, the first seminar I took in 1984, so it goes back a bit. Yeah, I've been doing it for that long. Is take care of yourself first so you can then take care of others. And at the time, it sounded so, it's so simple, so easy, so obvious. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, I got it. Not so fast. Because learning that, putting ourselves first, exactly, well, Amanda, that's the thing. That, sorry, back to what you're saying about the puppet. It is that idea is when you give someone else the power of your emotions, you are giving them the strings to, your pup, to, be your, to be a marionette, to be a puppet. Because if they take time to love you up, you feel great. But if they happen to be absent for a while, maybe they're at work or something else, you'll be yearning for them to come back and you'll feel very disconnected. And so basically what happens, your emotional state inside is governed by somebody else's mood. That is codependency. And it is like being a puppet on a string. So yes, exactly. Anyway, so back to, back to what I was saying. So taking care of yourself first so you and take care of others was a ground rule, ground rule I learned in a seminar. That was something we, I kind of glossed over for many years. Because I thought I knew what I was talking about. I thought I knew what it was about. And it, it, it came up in a very big way several years ago where I was realizing just how profound that statement was. When I realized and learned how taking care of myself first was actually not a selfish act and in fact gave me more ability to, self, to actually help others, it was liberating. It was transformational. Because I, saw, I, saw, I finally got that the old paradigm I lived under and I was so entrained in service through various workshops and trainings I took, that I was always giving myself away to other people. I was giving the energy to take care of other people. And this is codependent too, by the way, is when I was always making sure that everyone else felt okay, sacrificing myself to do it, that's also codependency. That's, not, that's a different flavor of codependency, by the way, because it wasn't about they control their feelings, but their well-being was more important than my own. In fact, my, their well-being, if they didn't, weren't well, I would feel depressed. When they did feel well, I felt better because I was taking care of them energetically, whether it's friends, romantic partners, relationships, family, or any of that stuff. That is a path that is doomed to fail on many different levels. So when I realized that by taking care of myself first, it was actually by filling up my own, well, using the electric vehicle analogy, when I filled up my own batteries first, I had the energy to be able to help other people. When I didn't do that first and I helped other people first, I'd be running on empty so quickly, I couldn't give anything more. I'd be so drained, I'd be collapsing, I'd be sick, I'd be ill. And if you're somebody who burns himself out by helping other people, and I know people in the medical profession go through this, nurses especially, when they give so much, they get so worn out, they sacrifice themselves for the sake of other people. And that isn't, it may be altruistic, it might be almost being like a martyr, but it's not healthy. The lesson I keep learning, and it's this thing that comes in so many different analogies, that when we learn to take care of ourselves first, we're able to function effectively in the world, serving, contributing, making a difference in the world, standing up for other people, making things happen. But the more we keep taking care of ourselves, the more we can continue to do that. It is a, it is a cycle that we take care of ourselves first, then we go and function in the world. Take care of ourselves first, then go function in the world. So, so what does that mean? Let me see what you're saying here. You think, of our emo you think of our emotional wellness like a gas tank, and when we give others our energy, our love tank is flashing on empty. Love filling our tank or battery first. Exactly. You basically took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> I was using gas tank for a while, but now I'm going to fill up your tanks, but I say using the battery because I'm kind of a fan of electric vehicles, so I switched to electric power versus gasoline, <laughs> just for my own um, languaging. But it really is that level. You know, it, it is about filling up our own fuel system, whichever one you choose, first. So you can then contribute to other people because it is, tr as much as we, um, I'm going to say this another way, there's a way coming through. As much as I am firmly in the belief about spiritual teaching, the fact that we are sourced and supplied by spirit, we can't keep giving, giving, giving until we give up. To quote a book by a friend of mine, thank you Brian for that reminder, it's that thing about you've got to be willing to say no to certain things. This is part of agreement keeping, which is a whole other talk I've done before, so that we can take care of ourselves. Because sometimes it's so tempting to say yes to all these different opportunities out there. This, this is actually, you know, this part, of the, this part of the agreements talk. So I'm giving you this piece as well. I'm going to teach about this. I'm going to do a course on this. I have to now, realizing more and more that when we say no to things, it's actually a healthy choice when we want to take care of ourselves. There are social gatherings I've been invited to over the last few months that were things I could have gone to, but I felt that the price energetically of going to them was higher than the benefit of going. And also the price I was going to pay for not taking care of myself first. 
So I've actually become better at saying no to things that sounded very tempting, that were very shiny, like shiny object syndrome, like so cool, such things out there. By saying no, I actually came back to a place of self-support, so I actually felt better. I slept better, I was, more, I was healthier, I felt better about myself. And when I've done things where I've said yes to events that didn't do, that weren't going to be right, I found out afterwards the price I was going to pay. So the lesson I've been learning is to fine tune my response to promises, to agreements. So a lot of times now, as sad as, as bad as it sounds, no isn't bad, is saying no to things that aren't lining up, you know? Is that Amanda, so I just read what you said there. You heard this once, when we take a glass of water and try to pour it out to others, whoops, we have a limited amount versus pouring water in to the glass of yourself, and then eventually the water will overflow the glass and then will trickle out on the table. Uh, interesting analogy. So basically saying is if you take the glass and you pour it out to other people, you empty the glass, there's nothing left. But if you keep pouring into the glass and then it overflows, it fills other people. I've said actually quite a few times in my talks and in my coaching, that the best way to live is where you can live from your overflow. The self-love practice I talk about in my coaching, the meditation I provide for my clients, is something you do for yourself. So you fill up your, fill up your tanks, fill up your, yes, the power of no, fill up your battery, fill up your resources first, and then you can give from the overflow. If you're giving from the lack, if you're giving from the limitation, you're absolutely in a place where you are falling apart, where you're losing out, where you're not getting what you want. And the thing is, it's also sometimes coming from a place of, of neediness, which is another thing that's not healthy for relationships. Well, thank you, Amanda. Yes, subscribe to my channel. Well, watch my broadcast. I'll give the links, by the way, at the back end of the broadcast so you can find my replays and everything else. And if you want support, I can help you with this too. This is something that I'm passionate about more and more in my work. And I, get, I, I think I'm, I'm going to offer a webinar probably in a... In a, in a a low entry fee course for people to get this understanding because agreement keeping and taking care of yourself are two foundations of how to live a life that is healthy. When you live in this place of recognizing who you are, let, okay, let me another piece of this. The reason why a lot of people don't do this is because some people feel that somehow if they do things like self-care and keeping agreements and they say no to things, they're being selfish. And selfishness from a point of view of ego that is not um, nice. For me, Self-care is a selfish act, but it's the selfish, that's the big S for self, meaning your whole self, not just an egocentric um, arrogance that some people do was like, you know, I don't care about any other people and take care of myself, I don't care about, you know, about anybody else. As much as that is a bad thing, in the core of it, that actually is a wise choice. Again, self-care first, you can take care of others. And this, te this, this principle is a game changer for some people. If if in a relationship, if you're in a relationship, or you want to be in a relationship, and you and your partner or your future partner both learn the principle of self-care first, take care of yourselves first, it isn't about you going to separate corners and never see each other. Far from it. What it means is that you contribute massively to each other in partnership. And your relationship becomes so much more additive and expressive and, and free than it could ever be if you just simply gave to each other. If you spent your whole time in a relationship giving, giving, giving to each other, which I've done that before, it was painful after a while. The recognition is that we become more able to give over and to really take care of yourself. Yeah, well, Tony Robbins didn't, didn't originate that, but yes, on the airlines, when you put your oxygen mask on first to give yes somebody else, it's impossible to give somebody else if you're already dying of, ox of, oxygen, of lack of oxygen. So yeah, Tony Robbins does, does hijack that quote as well. I use it as well, <laughs> so it's true. So the recognition is that you have the ability in a relationship to contribute to your relationship by giving to yourself first, as backwards as that sounds. And that's the recognition is that's so powerful, is that when you understand that all relationships thrive, when you take care of yourself first, then your relationships start to blossom and grow and everything you're, every relationship you're in is healthier because you're healthier. If you're going to every relationship looking to get, get, get from all these people, to take from those people, one, you're going to lose those relationships and two, you won't get filled up. It'll be a temporary band-aid at best so self-love first is basically nurturing and healing yourself whether it's an emotional wound or a physical wound or just a, a self-care a choice is a powerful place to be and unfortunately uh, yeah i guess i gotta say this i've been watching some people lately who've been using their wounds physical or emotional to plead for help from other people and it's not clean and this is one of those, this, this is a fine line I'm walking here. I'll be careful I say this because I've got friends of mine going through some cancer treatment and other things too, where I'm watching them. Well, actually, I'm going to say this about one or two of my friends who are going through cancer treatment right now. But I'm watching them be so vigilant about taking care of themselves first that they draw people to them to help them out. 
One of my friends, is, he's, doing, he's doing videos every couple of days now, but he posts pictures of it when he goes in for treatment. And his way of doing it is so like, I'm doing this because I want to be healthy. And I'm doing this for myself and I welcome your support. It's such a wonderful invitation because it's not a place like, I need your help to fix me. It's like, no. If you're unable to do that for yourself, that's one thing. But if you're able to do something, even if it's just simply to post a picture saying, I'm taking care of myself and I love your support, that can change it. Now, that's a, that's a path I wasn't planning to go down, but it's true on all levels. So backing up to the key is self-care, self-support, self-love, self-appreciation are keys to massively opening up. Yeah, temp so a temporary band-aid at best is which the wound just gets deeper and oozes more and more victim role maybe. Yeah, exactly, because that's the thing, is that, um, that's, a different, that's a different analogy. I'm watching, so I'm watching analogies throw through, through, through my head. When you truly own your self-support, then you become more whole. I mean, it is a selfish act. It is self-supportive. It is being aligned to who you are. But when you do that, everything changes. One of the lessons I learned quite a few years ago is that my inner support transformed into my inner mood, meaning that I was actually happier by side effect. And there's, there's, a, there's a quote out, I think there's a book out called Happiness for No Reason. It is such a simple teaching. It isn't happiness for no reason. It's happiness because you don't need anything else from anybody else. It's happiness because you love yourself, support yourself, care about yourself. And that generates more, more joy, more positive energy, and it basically makes you more attractive. This is, by the way, my side effect that I love talking about. For those people looking for love and wanting to get a healthy relationship, when you love yourself first and you care about yourself and you do respect the being that you are, as you fill up your own battery tank, as we put the analogy, you become more attractive. So if you're looking for love and you want to get a relationship, be that magnet that pulls in what you want, not from a place of desperation or neediness, but from wholeness and, un and not needing it. Your happiness for no reason, exactly, Marilyn. So perfectly said. And this is the thing, is that relationships work even better when neither of you need each other. I, I've used this quote so many times because I think it's the best model for codependency from Jerry Maguire, you complete me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Nobody completes anybody because none of you are incomplete. So it's a fallacy. It sounds romantic and, some, and, and so many love songs out for the last 70 years have been teaching and preaching codependency. You know, I can't live if you're living, living was without you to quote Harry Nilsson. There's so much of that that we must, um, I won't say eradicate, but awaken it beyond that. And so my passion and my messaging, all these talks are about is about exactly what you said, Mary Lynn. Be whole and happy on your own or you won't be happy in a relationship. Thank you. You've been watching my videos. <laughs> I've talked about that before. So this is a reminder, an encouragement, an invitation to go deeper in your own self-support, your own self-love, your own self-appreciation. Um, because if you do that, it will change every relationship around you, especially the one with yourself. I've been preaching about this, talking about this, preaching, not a minister, but you know, speaking about this for a long time because I'm really clear now more and more that teaching you how to love yourself and appreciate yourself is gonna change every single one of your relationships, starting with you. I think I've made this point clear enough by now. I will put a couple of links in the comments. You can reach out to me for support if you got stuck in relationships, not sure what's working for you. I'll put a link in the comments. You can find out how to do that. But really, you've been saying that for years as well. <laughs> well, apparently we're not the only ones. I'm sure there's a few other hundred thousand people talking about this too, so it's great, yes. So, and was that Amanda? It's embedded in our childhood. I always think cut the umbilical cord so we can breathe in our own and through experience, trial, the trial tribulations will make itself deeper, yes. Lean into yourself for the love. Exactly. I, I've done a whole bunch of talks about the childhood patterns, by the way. So that's another layer of this that we haven't been trained in. So sometimes you've got to learn how to take care of yourself because maybe you weren't raised in a family where that was actually shown to you or expressed to you. That's another reason why I'm coaching this more and more in my clients because for some of, some of my clients, they never got the tools as kids. Either they were smothered or they were ignored and they didn't learn how to take care of themselves in a way that was healthy. They weren't educated. The thing is, it's never too late. In fact, now is a perfect time learn how to take care of yourself so that everything works out and then you have what you want and love works more easily and relationships go beyond what you've ever had this is my promise because I've seen it happen so many times so again I'll put a link in the comments for reaching out for a chat if you want to talk to me I'll also put a link in the comments for my self-love meditation because it's a guided meditation it's two guided meditations excuse me with a workbook that will train your inner systems to love yourself more and more you're very welcome, Amanda. Thanks for being with me and thanks for in interacting with me too. So if you haven't seen my broadcast before, quick replays. Um, 
I go live every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time right here on my personal page, which is Barry Selby on Facebook. The replays go to my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, the author. Please like my page and you can watch them there. I have been noticing that it seems like not all my videos, because I've got 844 of them, <laughs> not all of them are on my business page, but they are on my YouTube channel. So on my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Barry Selby, or Barry Selby, you can search for that. You can subscribe to my channel. There's a playlist on there called Messages for the Masculine, so you can find all my replays there. This will be up there as soon as I get a chance to download it. So again, links in the comments for my self-love practice and for my um, the discovery session, so you reach out to chat. And my invitation to you, my encouragement, my suggested homework for you is how can you up-level your own self-support? How can you take care of yourself more than you have done up to this point? And if you're willing to put in the comments, or, send, or message me privately if you don't want to do it in the comments directly, I invite you to respond and let me know. Because frankly, there's always more to do. There's always more to love. <laughs> Thank you, Amanda Michelle. Right, Raphael. No worries, you'll just hibernate for a few weeks and watch them all. Yeah, some people have been binge watching, I know. So, absolutely. So, um, having said all that, I appreciate you watching my broadcast and thanks for being with me and thanks for the interaction. I love that. And if you want to share this with any people you know, feel free to do so. But more than anything else, I'm inviting you to take care of yourself first. That's your homework assignment if you take it on, if you choose to accept Mission Impossible, so to speak. And with that, I thank you for watching. I'll be back in tomorrow, same time, same channel, with some other topic, maybe on the same theme. I am definitely, this is definitely leading towards a masterclass I'll be teaching on this because it's vital now more than ever. So with that said, I thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow and I appreciate you being with me. Take care of yourself and I'll see you soon. Bye.